Yo, welcome back to Auto Race Garage, ARG here, and this is part two of the steering and suspension upgrade on the 1966 Mustang. Now, after waiting days and days and days for all the parts to show up and making sure I had everything, making sure I didn't forget anything, which I did forget one thing, but we can still move on and head. I got everything here. So, sign for the front, I got a new center link here. Uh, two new upper control arms, lower control arms, uh, shocks for front and rear. I will do the rear another uh, video. Uh, end links, sway bars, brakes, idler arm, you know, springs. Just all the typical um, stuff you've replaced. Nothing special. New spring perch there, spring isolator. You know, just the normal things here. So, um, like I said, this is just nothing... Uh, big performance wise right now you know right now phase one i want for this car is just getting it on the road driving safely that's what i want for this right now is phase one phase two will be you know heavy performance upgrade modifications all that kind of goody stuff but right now i just want to drive it and enjoy it so we're gonna get the uh control arms installed on the car we're gonna get uh Put the spring perch on the uh, upper control arm. That's what I've really been waiting for was the spring perch so I can start putting everything back together. Um, so, yeah, we'll get into it right now. I'm just going to go over there. And then we'll just install these on the back. I'm going to install these nuts on the back. I'm gonna start the pilot hole. Go. I'm gonna do this nice and slow. I don't know if this drill bit, this is a drill bit, might not be a. Yeah, that's pretty good. You can see the two uh, pilot holes. Um, so I'm, this is the uh, step bit I'm gonna use here. And uh, all right, so hopefully the camera's in a better position where I can uh, put some pressure on the drill and not block the camera. So let's change out these bits. Alright, let's start it. I'm going go nice and slow. Alright, just like that. What goes in there? Now it's not going all the way past here but the control it's not gonna go past that far anyway because of the control arm so here we are all right we got both holes drilled out boats fit through them we can go ahead and install this uh, upper control arm back in now all right so we got an old one here a new one here um so it already came with New studs in there. I didn't know it was coming with that, which is fine. So I just got to reuse the bolt. I mean the nut. And then, obviously, we will swap over the uh, all the spacers. Now, I'm going to put the spacers back exactly how they came off for the old one. That adjusts the caster. And then I will let the alignment shop um, do their thing on that end there. So, and I believe the spring perch came with new hardware, so I won't have to reuse that. And yes, it did. So 
So here goes our new spring purchase here. And we'll go ahead and install these. I see these have rubbers on it. These ones didn't. Um, maybe they just fell off. I don't know. It don't look like they ever did though. get this thing back on the car all right so of course we're gonna install them into our new pre-drilled holes here and I got my shims I got my shims on there perfect go on the back side Put the bolts back on all the nuts on there. So I find it easier to screw them back, uh, bolt them back in from here. Hit it from the back side. They're both, both the nuts are here. It's just a lot easier instead of climbing up underneath the car. So we're gonna tighten this thing down. All right, so I got the control arm on here. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put the lower control arm on so we can bolt the knuckle back on and the spindle and all that and the last thing we'll put on is the spring and the shock uh hopefully that spring goes on uh easy now that i know how to work the uh, spring compressor so uh yeah let's get into putting this lower control back on so so this lower control arm i got um it's not i noticed the uh the ball joint is Preston, well, I noticed that it's not one of those types where you put a cotter pin through. It has a locking nut. Um, off the top of my head, I forgot what brand this is. I mean, this is, it's a cheap brand. I'm not even going to lie to you. Uh, like I said, I'm just trying to get this thing back on the road so I can enjoy it and then figure out my plans on rather how far upgraded I want to go. But anyway. Enough about that. We'll just get this thing installed here. Yeah, like this one didn't even got a fitting to uh, grease fill it, but like I said, it's okay. And I should install the fitting in there before I uh, get too far ahead of myself. Let's get this installed. the strut bar stored back on here and then we'll tighten down the lower control arm there we go
All right, so we can get this knuckle installed on here. All right, so we got the knuckle back on there. Um, I got the cotter pin in the top. Like I said, that one just had a locking one. We'll see how well these work. I mean, this ain't no daily driver, not just yet. But um, I think I want to go ahead and install the spring. So we're going to break out the spring compressor and compress the new spring so we can get it in here. All right, so I got the spring in the insulator. Just It just slides on there. Hopefully this is right. Uh, the old one was completely disintegrated, but um, I'm going to show you guys how I got the spring out because I'm going to put it on the exact same way. So this is with the spring isolated, this is the top of the spring. I installed this thing upside down. So yeah, so I had the clamps clamping the top here slide it on there that worked there my impact and zip this. So before we can put this uh, rotor back on here, there's a few things I need to do to mine. Now, this is the the wheel stud that come that comes with the rotor. Now, my car, um, it's been modified. Someone put uh, calipers from a '79 Monte Carlo on them. So now, and it has a little bit of a spacer on it. It has a, this spacer here, about that thin, and it's really not enough one the uh there's not enough threads for the wheel lug to buy i mean it, it gets it on there but not as nice not as much as i would like so i bought longer ones here three inches which i wouldn't i don't really need three inches three inches overkill but that's the only size i can find also the top of the control arm was hitting the wheel on like on a wide turn so now now that i lower the controller on one inch i don't know what's going to happen if it's going to hit or not if it does i'm going to have to get a bigger spacer and then i would still need a, a, 
So if with a bigger spacer, this one wouldn't work either. So we're gonna go ahead and install these onto the new uh, rotors on all of them, and we'll get to it. All right, popping wheel studs is real simple. You just wanna grab a lug nut there, thread it on there a little bit, and just hit it with a hammer. Just like that. There. Simple. I'll grab my new ones here. Now this is what I went with. Um, I got this from uh, Summit Racing. Put some washers on here. Put a lug nut. And there we are. New wheel stud is fully in there. I'm going uh, to repeat this process four more times. Then we get this thing on the car. All right, so now we got all five installed. Uh, we'll save those. Before we can put this thing in the car, uh, in, back in the car, we got to get this bearing out and seal and install it into this hub because it does not come with a new one. So, let's pop this out. Oh. Set that in there. Grab the seal. Put a little grease on there. We just tap the edge of the seal. Hammer it back down in there. Ready to put this thing back on the car. Alright, we're gonna put some grease on the spindle here. Rotor on here. 
put the bearing back in here. Slide that in there. Next goes the washer. We're gonna clean the washer up. Don't really need to grease that. It get greased already. Slide that washer on there. Crank our nut. Hand tight on this is fine. Don't crank that down. You won't be able to turn the wheel. Then we put our locking nut on there. And then we'll slide our cotter pin in. There we go. I'm not gonna put the wheel on yet. I'm gonna put the sh uh, shock back on, clean up this brake with some brake clean. We'll install the caliber. And we'll be good to go. In fact, we'll go ahead and reinstall this caliber right now. Okay, so for those of you who didn't watch the disassembly, I do not have factory uh, Mustang brake calipers. I actually have a 79 Monte Carlo uh, one piston caliber on this car it came with the car so that's what I'm keeping for right now um, it came with this uh, adapter to accept the Monte Carlo caliber so I gotta put this back on and then I can bolt the calibers back in Alright, so I had to cut the video because these were fighting me. Uh, I don't like this aftermarket. Well, not even that. Just this was really hard. I don't like this setup. Um, I think it's going to be a while for these brake pads to even wear because it's not going to be a daily driver like that. But when it is time to do brakes again, I think I'm going to go with a more, uh, uh, what do you call it? A more common swap uh, disc brakes uh, swap instead of these like Monte Carlo calipers but anyway we're moving on we're gonna get this strut and in, uh, shock installed here and um, we'll be pretty much done with this side and I just got to do the other side all right so I got the shock mount already on there we're gonna be putting these KYB uh, I think it's, I got the uh, GR2 uh, model Nice, good, budget friendly. Oh, that was the rear. We stall these on here. And I believe it came with new hardware as well. Yeah, so we got a new hardware. And this is simple, just screw it down there, bolts at the top of the uh, strut tower, and then it bo uh, bottom bolts onto the spring perch.
Oh, we're just gonna get those started. We'll go under the car, get the uh, ones on the spring purse started. Get this thing. All right, so on the driver, I put the spring on backwards, so I had to go and rent the spring. It's so damn dark with my damn light. Ugh. <laughs> Behind the scenes. You want me to hold it? No, I got it. I got it. All right, so these springs does have an orientation. There's a top and bottom to them, so that's why this one wasn't sitting flush, and I thought when it when I put weight on it, it would sit flush. But when I did the passenger side, I ended up putting it on the correct way and it was sitting flush with no weight on it. So then I knew I uh, messed up. So I had to rent the spring compressor again, flip this over, put it all back together. And so that's how that goes. I also got the center link and the sway bar back installed with the new sway bar bushing. I didn't film any of this because it's so hard to film under the car, but you can see I got the new end links there, uh, the end links there, tie rods, all that good stuff there. Put the stabilizer bar back on. Um, we are ready to drop this thing, put the wheels back on. I still have to see if I have a clearance if the wheel is still hitting the control arm. Uh, we'll have to see because I did do the Shelby drop on it, so... We'll see, Maybe, hopefully it doesn't. If not, I have to get bigger spacers. Um, here it goes with the longer uh, lug nuts as well. So let's pop these wheels on, lower this thing to the ground, and uh, hopefully start it. All right, so I, I had the wheels on the car, and before this thing rubbed, it had this little bit of spacer on it, and the upper control arm was rubbing the tire on a wide turns um, so I knew I probably needed a spacer and then I didn't know yet which one to get because I was also lowering the control arm position uh, by one inch so doing that now it still revs was even worse because now it's like hitting the wheel or uh, the rim the wheel the back of the wheel when it had just the one on which it originally had so I end up going and getting a half inch spacer because I already put longer studs on there. So hopefully I got this from a, it's a bear, it's a half inch, uh, hopefully you guys can see the part number there. I got this from Summit Racing. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try this out. great reviews especially with the uh, centric hub fit nice and snub let's go put this on the car all right so and it's universal but it yeah I like that let's put the wheel on and then we'll check the back and see and make sure everything it's still out the way and it's lined up. Uh. I also got new uh, lug nuts. I'm using open ends, obviously, because I got three inch uh, longer studs. And my old ones, they're just pretty bad, so I ended up just getting a pack of these. Uh, that's the part number for those, if you want to run those. They're just uh, some doormen. Just nothing special, just nice opening uh, lug nuts. So let's put these on the car.
Alright, so we're rolling with barely almost probably about like an inch from the tire. Um I think I might be happy with that. Uh worst case scenario, I will grind the uh control arm file it down a little bit but i think we'll be fine i think this half inch space will work i got enough room I, even on the wide turns i think it'll be all right and like i said i will grind that down if it does for a bar but um yeah i'm happy with that so that will finally done with the steering and suspension on this thing it took a it took a little while because um just getting all the parts in and that can that coil spring was that spring was ridiculous but i'm glad that's done everything hopefully once it settles let me show you guys how it this is how it sits um It sits still a little high, but I think once the spring settles some more, that'd be fine. Those are only, I think, uh, a fit. That's only a 15-inch rim. The tires on there is at 205, 55-15. Um, yeah, I think once it, once the, all the suspension settles, it drop a little bit. Like I said, I put I put stock uh, springs on there anyway. I didn't put a uh, lowering spring, so think it'd be all right but um that's it for this video i hope you guys liked it if you got any questions comments any tips for me uh like comment subscribe you can follow me on instagram at auto auto raise underscore yt i post a lot of pictures of this car and my other cars and just like other things i'm doing uh i'll catch y'all next time